Chairman Phil Baruth of Senate Education. I'm joined by Chairman David Scharr, Representative and uh, Chair of House Education. And um, we'd like to welcome you to this public hearing. And I just wanted to say a couple of things about what we're here to do and what we're not here to do. What we are here to do is to listen to you, to listen to students from Vermont schools uh, and what they have to say about school safety, violence in schools, and what you think should be done about it. Uh, what we're not here to do is to have the sort of public meeting we had earlier in the session in the well of the house uh, that was uh, more broad-based in terms of who we were hearing from. This was called specifically to listen to you. So with that said, I think the ground rules are that for right now we have time to give three minutes to each speaker. So I will call your name, and I'll also call the name of the person who's next in line so that you can be aware that it's going to be your turn. And then uh, Representative Joe Batista will be the timekeeper. He's uh, excessively cruel and will <laughs> cut you off like that if you go over 301. Kidding, he's a sweetheart. You could probably go 301, 302. Um, so let's start with uh, Elena Hunt and on deck, Nicholas Hamm. And the way this works is you come and sit in the chair and you usually start by saying your name and where you're from. Okay, hello, my name is Elena Hunt. You may remember me from the last session where I served as a legislative page. I am an eighth grader and I attend Stowe Middle School. Like Representative Jim Batista and many others, I'm a native Vermonter. As a Vermonter, I have learned winter isn't over until nature decides we've been through enough. Maple syrup is always at its best when it's just been boiled. And last but not least, Vermonters are some of the most level-headed and strongest people I know. I look around this room and I'm inspired. I see representatives who are also school teachers, like Representative Beck, and a retired principal, like Representative Pierce, and a school board chair, like Representative Long. I'm proud of this little state with all the wonders it holds, and that's why I think we can be a role model on the nation's gun debate issue. I look in this room and I see role models like Senator Blank, even though she isn't here, um, Senator Blank, you are a leader. When I served as a legislative page, you demonstrated energy. You are a graduate of Harvard with a master's in education. You are both a teacher and a parent. Gun violence is a problem that is plaguing our nation, and most people agree that it needs to be fixed. To solve this problem, a number of changes should be made. We should raise the age requirement to buy a gun from 18 to 21. We should implement more enhanced background checks. I also think that for me to feel safe in my own school, there needs to be stronger restrictions to the access of assault rifles and semi-automatic rifles. We need to consider the different ways in which people would lose access to their guns, such as domestic violence cases where guns are present in the home. My classmates are scared, and so am I, and I do not want to be scared to go to my own school. And I definitely do not want my parents to be scared to send my brother, who was only in fifth grade, and I off to school every morning. Just yesterday, another school shooting happened in Maryland. How do I know my school isn't going to be next? How will you take action to keep me safe in school? Last week, I helped my school organize our walkout. Almost the entire school went out to the freezing cold to show their support. As we read the names of the students who were killed in Parkland and shared facts about gun control, I looked around at my classmates and realized how much they all mean to me. My school is small, so even when one classmate moves away, it's a big deal. I cannot imagine any of my friends dying. The lives of my classmates are at stake. I will not feel safe until there are more restrictions on guns. I'm only 14 years old, so I can't solve this problem alone. But I do know that we cannot continue to live in fear. I am proud to be a Vermonter, but right now I'm not as proud to be an American. Vermont has a history of taking a leading role when implementing changes, and we should be a leader for other states as we face this problem. For example, in 1777, Vermont was the first state to ban slavery. Vermont was the first state to legalize marijuana through the legislative system just this year. I feel strongly that we can and should be a leader in the gun violence epidemic. Cabin Coolidge once said, I love Vermont because of her hills and valleys, her scenery and invigorating climate, but most of all, because of her indomitable people. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. And this is a petition that 262 students from my school signed demanding gun control action. So. Thank you. Uh, what we'll do is um, put that on our website for people to okay. uh, be able to access. So Nicholas Hanna, and then following Nicholas, Sarah Evans. Hello, my name is Nicholas Anna from Essex. I'm the student representative on the EWSD school board. 
Armed violence is an extremely inflammatory and sore issue in our school, as evinced by the fact that I am here today. The following is a quick analysis I drew up on behalf of the Essex High School student body. There are false rumors that have been percolating throughout our high school, uh, speculating about alleged shooters, detailing info like who they might be or when they might strike, reflecting s student feelings of vulnerability. These rumors have proven to be so prevalent that our principal has repeatedly gone on to our school intercom to denounce them. The fear in our school, though speculative, is not unfounded. <clears throat> Remember on August 24, 2006, in Essex Elementary School, how Christopher Williams killed teacher Alicia Shanks and murdered Mary Schnedeker. About 39 faculty and staff, including my mother, were attending an in-service day when Williams arrived and began shooting. Last year, a suspect said that he was armed with both explosives and firearms and indicated that he was going to do harm at Essex High School unless police met his demands. During the police shakedown, Many students, including me, had loaded, fire, uh, had loaded assault firearms waved in their face as they were viciously yelled at. Fairhaven High School, just last month, nearly had a tragedy of its own as, students planned, as a student planned to, quote, kill as many as I can. An onslaught of fear is logical seeing this national increasing trend of school shootings. In the, given the clouded history of our school systems and armed violence, nothing is out of the question. This leaves students frightened and disenfranchised. A lot of this fright comes from the anonymity and the randomness of a school shooting. All it takes is one person named Billy and his AR to rack up seven kills of innocent students at its local public school system. Currently, the best defense students have is that of statistics, relying on the probability that Billy will choose a school not theirs to strike. Needless to say, the insidious possibility of a school shooter is non-conducive to a healthy learning environment. There has been a remitting cycle of American carnage exploding from the barrels of firearms all across the nation. Given this, something must be done to break this abhorrent pattern of tragedies. Legislators must prioritize the safety. It must prioritize safety in order to cultivate the next generation of successful Americans. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Sarah Evans and following Sarah Willa Lane. <coughs> Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Evans and I attend Stowe Middle School. I've lived, in, I've lived in Vermont long enough to know that we are a progressive, supportive state and I am proud to call the Green Mountain State my home. I love Vermont and the community that surrounds me. Everyone knows everyone. We stand with each other in tough times and I ask that today on March 21st we stand together on the issue of school safety and specifically gun violence. Parkland, Florida was voted one of the safest places to live. We often hear that Vermont is one of the safest places to live in. So this, so this might not seem like, the, like a pressing matter, but how safe students like me feel in school is what we need to pay attention to. With the tragic school shooting with, that happened just over a month ago in Parkland, Florida, at the back of students' minds, many of us want to make a difference so we can prevent more school, school shootings. I do not want my parents to worry about whether or not they will ever get to see their children come home from school so students do not have to feel the lifelong pain of losing their best friend at such a young age, so that more students do not have to be sacrificed for our nation to see that there is a problem. My school safety should not be a part of an ongoing debate. It should be a given. I understand that the problem is complex and that the solution is not as simple as any one answer, but I believe we need to require enhanced background checks and close the gun show loophole. I believe we should raise the legal age of our monitor can purchase and own a firearm to 21. With the current laws in place, anyone over the age of 16 can purchase and possess a handgun without the consent of a parent or guardian. That is younger than you need to be to be entrusted with the right to vote, to serve in the military, and to purchase alcohol. It is actually easier in Vermont for a 16-year-old to buy a weapon than it is to get a driver's license. I am only 14 years old, but all decisions concerning guns affect my life right now. I cannot imagine middle schoolers being able to buy a gun in two or four years they should have to wait. I do not want to have to worry about a school shooting ever happening again. We are only 13 weeks into, th into 2018, and we have already had over two 18 school shootings nationwide. If this does not send an urgent enough message, I hope that the voices you hear today make it more clear. 
it is time to put an end to school violence and to create safer learning environments for students, for your children, and for our teachers. Because those 17 lives lost in Parkland, Florida, will never step foot in the school again. I know that some of the senators and representatives in this room are your educators and parents, and this has to impact you too. I ask for your support. I do not want to ever have to send a frantic text to my parents as I had in my classroom, trying to fit in the goodbye that I should never have to make, just to make sure my parents know how much I love them, just in case I never see them again. No student should ever go through this ever again. This is now, this is time, the time is now to make a change. To make a change. Thank you very much for your time and for letting me speak today. Will Lane, uh, followed by Chloe Clark. Good afternoon. <clears throat> My name is Willa Lane and I'm from East Montpelier. As many of you know, a month ago, a 19-year-old former student at Fairhaven Union was reported for actively planning a shooting. Law enforcement intervened and the shooting was prevented. And so in other words, the system that we have in place to stop those school shootings worked. Everybody can go home because a tragedy like this didn't affect Vermont. We're all fine and things are going fantastically, except they're not. There would be no need for law enforcement to intervene in the first place if it had been harder for the student to plan a shooting or to buy a gun. Yes, the system was on our side this time, but what about next time or the time after that? How many times will we be lucky enough not to die? Why is this even a question that I'm having to sit here and ask you? I'm 15 and I've seen the headline, worst mass shooting in US history, five times. My seven-year-old brother has seen it four times. There are people who will tell you that this isn't about guns. After all, guns aren't what kill people. People kill people. But people couldn't murder so easily if they didn't have access to military-grade weapons easily made fully automatic with bump stocks, capable of firing multiple rounds per second. You don't need a gun like that for hunting. You don't need a gun like that for self-defense. While Governor Scott and I have different views on many political issues, the need for stricter gun control is something that we agree on. As he recommended to legislators a month ago, we need to raise the gun buying age to 21, and we need to ban bump stocks and large capacity magazines. We also need to close the gun show loophole and require stricter background checks to buy a gun. I don't want to have to worry about whether my little brother will come home from school alive, or if I'll have to watch my friends die on the tile floors of our school hallways next week. I don't want to fear for my life while going to school to get an education. What do we have to lose by implementing stricter gun control laws? Certainly not more lives. They've already been taken. Thank you. Chloe Clark and Emma Pope McRae. Hi, everyone. My name is Chloe Clark and I'm from Middlebury Union High School. I participated in the walkouts on Wednesday and Monday for two reasons. I strongly believe that the only way people can effectively make change is through speaking out, others listening, and then spreading the message. So, in participating in these events, I wanted to say that I hear the voices of the friends and family of those lost in Parkland. I wanted to let the world know that I support them and would spread their message. And that's the second reason. I wanted to speak out against gun violence in school. Don't get me wrong, I understand the Second Amendment, and I think that if you want to own a gun, that's fine. Same with hunting, I think it's a great sport. But no one needs an AR-15, or any type of assault weapon for that matter. Not only do I think that outlawing these types of gun for civilian use is important, but necessary. As are background checks, I strongly believe that one of the main causes of this epidemic is that anyone, no matter their history, can so easily buy a gun. The fact that state law lets kids buy a gun before they can legally drink is horrifying. Because this isn't a game. It's not even just an important issue. This is our lives we're talking about, children's lives. If kids are being shot on a fairly regular basis, there's something seriously wrong with our country. And a change needs to come. So please, I ask you, 
Listen to our thoughts and requests. Do not let this happen again. Thank you. Emma Pope McRae and Narja Sansali. Good afternoon. My name is Emma Pope McRae and I am a junior at Middlebury Union High School. Every day in school when the intercom crackles to life, my heart skips a beat, wondering if the announcement will be someone saying that there is a shooter in the school, that we need to hide and our lives are in danger. In lockdown drills, as we crap cower in a darkened corner, I wonder if this time it's for real. I wonder which closet is big enough to hide in and if I'll be brave enough to help my friends hide and risk my life so that theirs can be saved. No one should have to live with this fear, and especially not children. I joined the walkout last Wednesday because, like so many of my peers, I've had enough of being afraid. Vermonters have always been the leaders in forging the right and just path. We have been one of the first states to legalize gay marriage, and the first state to abolish slavery. In this issue, too, we must lead the way in passing safe, common-sense gun laws. Legislation must be passed to protect these students who are the future of our state and our country. By asking us students here today, you have shown that you were willing to create change. I ask you, senators and representatives, to do everything in your power to help our students. We must have universal background checks. We must raise the legal age limit for buying a gun. We must remove weapons from the hands of abusers. We must limit access to these dangerous weapons so that tragic shootings do not happen again. There are so many things that can be done, and something must be done. Vermont's children cannot learn in fear. They cannot live in fear. Thank you. Narja Sansali and Ariana Graham Gurley. Hello, my name is Narja Sansali. I am 12 years old and I was one of the leaders at the walkout at Middlebury Union Middle School. Every day I walk through the halls of my school gazing at the familiar faces. And every night, I lie awake, imagining the all too familiar scene of a school shooting happening at my school. The chaos and the screams and the frantic calls, telling yourself that maybe it wasn't your friend you saw bleeding on the ground. It's time to make a stand for gun reform and make it harder for people like Nicholas Cruz to get the guns they use to shoot up schools. I don't want to hear the screams anymore. I don't want to hear the sobs anymore. And I don't think you do either. This senseless violence is killing so many people, and we are taking no action to stop it. I do not want to die in my school. I do not want to be huddled in the corner of a classroom, racking my brains to remember if I told my parents I loved them. One of my first memories of the years we first came to Vermont is my mother looking at the screen, crying, and hugging me close. This was after seeing me hook. My family came from Iran when I was one. We were in the land of freedom. How could this happen in America, of all places? Iran is a developing country, as many of you well know. But they have more restrictions in place than we do to keep anyone from having a gun. But now we have to, a chance to change the laws. Because my generation is pushing back. <clears throat> Us, whose first lesson was how to hide in a corner and be quiet in case a gunman entered our school. But we can't do anything without you, our senators and our representatives. Please help us in our push for gun reform. Help us to make this state a safer place for students, starting by simply having more background checks. I am not calling for a ban on all guns. I understand that people hunt and want to use guns to protect their families. All I am saying is that we can make it harder for people like Nicholas Cruz to get guns. So I ask you again, please help us. Thank you. Ariana Graham Durland, and on deck, Dahlia Harrison Urban. Hello, my name is Ariana Graham Gerland. I'm a seventh grader at Middlebury Union Middle School. At MUMS, I was one of the organizers for, of our walkout last Friday in protest for gun reform. When I came home from school that Thursday, February 15th, 
I didn't know anything had happened. And after I found out, I was devastated. Another school shooting? It took me a week and a half to get over it enough to realize that we could do something. We can make a difference. Maybe not all at once, but over time we can be the ones. If we work side by side with our legislators, we can make a difference, and we must. We cannot sit around here and do nothing while these senseless tragedies occur. We have to stand up and take action as human beings living in a world where these struggles with guns occur daily. This affects us all. In cases of domestic violence, hate crimes, and school shootings, if we can put in place gun violence prevention methods, such as background checks and required ages to buy a gun, then these tragedies will be much less likely to happen. In our, fight, in our federal executive branch, there are a lot of people who feel that it would be enough just to arm the teachers. I would like to respectfully disagree. If we arm the teachers, there will just be more fear. It increases the chance of that, that accidents could happen as well, and it makes a more chaotic scene in the event of a real school shooting. I also know that there are many Vermonters and other people who say that it, would, that it is not a safety hazard to own an AR-15 or another assault weapon. Their argument is that they're only using it to shoot with in their backyard and they're being safe. And I get that. I'm not saying that we should ban all guns to the public and take away the Second Amendment. One hunting rifle is fine, but that is fine. But if you're letting anyone own a gun, a gun that can take 17 lives in six minutes, that is not okay. That is not just sport. That is the ability to commit a mass murder in a matter of minutes, and it is happening more and more often. That is the thing we have to change. We cannot let these crimes continue, and I'm angry that no one has changed this before us. But since no one has, that means that someone has to, and that someone is us. We must make these changes. There are thousands of children out there who are scared of going to school each day, and I am one of them. Scared that it'll be our last day. So please make background checks, bans on assault weapons, and the higher minimum age for buying a gun a reality so we can make our beautiful Green Mountains, the land that is my home and your home, but most importantly, all of our homes, a safer place. Thank you. Dahlia Harrison Irvin, followed by Ren Cola. Good afternoon. My name is Dahlia Harrison Irwin. I am a seventh grader at Middlebury Union Middle School, and I choose safety. I choose safety for me and my friends and teachers. No student should have to worry about every school day being their last. No teacher should turn away from a job because of safety issues. I choose innocence, not for myself, but for young elementary students like the Sandy Hook elementary. When that shooting took place, I was in third grade. We had just moved here from Connecticut a few years back. When I heard, I was worried for my friends that I had left in Connecticut. Elementary school students like that should not have to worry. They shouldn't have to worry about their friends or teachers dying. They shouldn't have to worry about flashy shoes giving away hiding spots. Lastly, I choose my education over guns. I want to go to school feeling safe. We must change things. The Second Amendment is supposed to keep us safe, not guns. This is not just for kids. It is for women and racial and religious minorities. I ask Vermont to keep us safe by adhering to stronger background checks, raising the minimum age for buying, and making sure that bump stocks, like the ones used in the mass shooting in Las Vegas that turned a semi-automatic rifle into a fully automatic rifle, are not available. This is not a full ban on guns, but things must change. I choose the future. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn Caldwell and Sophie Pope McWright. Two notes on uh, the room. One is don't be freaked out by this guy down here. That's Peter Hirschfeld <laughs> with Vermont Public Radio. Uh, also, I noticed representatives from Senator Leahy's office here so that you know your federal delegation is listening to you as well. And I know that uh, Congressman Welch has representatives here also. Hello, I'm Ren Caldwell, one of the organizers of the Middlebury High School walkout. The day after the Parkland shooting, and many days after that, 
I found myself walking down the halls of my school and seeing the people I walked past in a completely different light. I would look into the eyes of my good friends, teachers, and other strangers and wonder what it would be like to see their faces in the newspaper or on social media as the next victims of school shootings, added magnitude to a statistic that was never once okay. Then I would wonder if they would be seeing me there. In this year, 2018, children like me walk into their schools and wonder if they will ever walk out. We look at the victims on the news and see faces that look just like ours. We feel powerless against the deadly force of guns, scared for our lives, and that is unacceptable. It is up to you, those in charge of protecting the people of our state, to do everything in your power to prevent such a tragedy from ever happening again. Thank you. Sophie Pope McWright and Willa Yonkman next. Hi, I'm Sophie Pope McCrite from Middle Marion High School. One week ago today, my sister and I prepared to participate in the nationwide walkout. I was excited, but nervous. We knew that there was a group of counter protesters who wanted to stop the walkout, and the thought of another public shooting kept entering my mind. This fear is not uncommon. I often find myself imagining a situation in which a shooter comes into our school. And I wonder why this possibility is even present in my mind. Why do we live in a world where people hear about the tragedy in Parkland and think it's just another public shooting? It's so frustrating to hear of yet another shooting and see people doing nothing. I participated in the walkout last Wednesday because I wanted to do something no matter how insignificant it might be. This is my chance and your chance to make a difference. Increasing safety measures in schools is important, but that's not the root of the problem. The real problem with gun violence is that people have access to guns when they shouldn't, and we need extensive background checks on people who want to buy guns because children and adults are dying. This needs to stop, and it can only happen if gun reform legislation is passed. <coughs> this is not for the sake of just my town or our state. Making a change will affect the whole country. We're starting a movement, and you are the only ones who can help us continue it. Thank you. Willie Youngman, followed by Sylvan Williams. Look at this right now. My name is Willie Youngman, and I am a resident of Faison and a 10th grader at Harvard Union High School. I urge your support for Bill S-55, which will make universal background checks mandatory and raise the legal age to purchase a gun to 21. I fully support this bill because it should never be easy for a dangerous or unstable individual to gain access to a gun, especially an assault-style weapon like the AR-15 used in Parkland. I believe that universal background checks will help to keep firearms out of the wrong hands and out of schools, where a gun should never, ever be. Although people may argue that if someone wants to get their hands on a gun, they will regardless of the law, in Australia, the number of gun deaths was the lowest on record in 2017 after passing the National Firearms Agreement in 1996 that banned certain semi-automatic weapons and imposed stricter licensing and registration requirements. It should never be easy for anyone to get their hands on a military-style assault rifle, and it should never be easy for someone to walk into a school and pull the trigger. We need to make it harder for them if the lives of students are on the line. As a student, I shouldn't have to be afraid to come to school. I used to think that I was safe because there would never be a school shooting in Vermont. But after the threats in Fairhaven, I no longer feel safe when I know what the current legislation about gun ownership is in Vermont. While other students in other countries are learning math, we are crouching in dark classrooms, wondering if this time it won't be a drill. Children shouldn't be dying for an amendment right ratified over 200 years ago. This is why our Constitution has amendments to begin with. Many of the students at Harwood and I will be marching on the 24th and will not give up the fight to pass legislation that will keep us safe from gun violence. Even if we can't vote yet, we will be heard. Enough is enough. So some of you might wonder what the bells and the lights are for. So the green light means the Senate is in session on the floor. Uh, and we are glad that the chair of the Senate Education Committee is able to join us. The flashing red light means that calling House members to the floor of the House, I'm going to go upstairs and see if I can get dispensation for the committee to continue to stay here and listen. Uh, in the meantime, the next witnesses. Willie Yonkman. 
Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Sylvan Williams, followed by Cameron Muller Hardy. My name is Sylvan Williams, and this is a poem. My mama birthed me a girl into a world of violence. A post 9 11 infant, I grew up on a planet where terror rocked my cradle, and the strung together names of mass shooting victims became my lullaby. I took my first steps on blood stained soil. I teased on the words, hands up, don't shoot. And mama, how come they still get shot? You always told me never to talk to strangers and to avoid walking alone at night, but keep your head down and your car keys in between your fingers if you have to. But you never taught me how to behave in a mass shooting because you never believed that could happen to your baby girl. But times have changed since you were my age. And mama, if I look down and see red spilling from my gut, does that mean that I've got to go to heaven? Will I join the thousands of us killed or will six feet under be as far as I get? And when you bury me, Mama, when you watch your own little girl lowered beneath the earth, how many bullets will they have had to remove from my chest before they dress me up to look pretty for my wake? But you know, Mama, people are always prettier when they still have a pulse. And I don't want to be another scapegoat that never succeeds in getting through to you. I don't want to be a statistic that they put on protest signs. I don't want my name being screamed in a poem. I don't want people saying that I was too young or too smart or too sweet to die like that because all of them are too young and too smart and too sweet to die. All of them were their mama's little baby and now they're dead. And mama, how many hours will it take for them to clean the floors of those high schools? How long will it take for them to hose down those sidewalks? What happens to the clothes that they died in because mama, blood stains are hard to wash out. And the harder you scrub, the more likely the blood is to discolor your own skin. And how long after those tiles have been cleaned and polished will it take for us to forget they were ever red? I'm connecting dots with the remnants of brain tissue, like constellations in a sky I can't see anymore. And I can't see anymore because my vision has been traded for miscommunications and my empty eye sockets reflect the places where bullets met the souls of my brothers and sisters. And I don't want to live in a world where eyes are only valid if they're looking down the barrel of a gun. And fighting this is hard. And it's hard when no matter how hard I yell, they won't listen. And eventually voices get hoarse. And so if I can no longer yell, this is me whispering. I've had enough. Thank you. Cameron Muller Harden, followed by Oscar Newberg. Hello, my name is Cameron Mueller Harder. I helped organize our walkout last week at Cabot School, and I've never shot a gun. I've never held a gun. And the number of times I've seen a gun, I could count on one hand. According to Vermont law, I could leave here right now, find a gun dealership, buy almost any gun I wanted to, go out into the woods and shoot it. When talking about gun control, many people point out that many more people die from cars than guns. This is true. In 2017, 40,000 people died from car accidents in the US. 12,000 were killed by someone with a gun. To properly compare, however, let's say I want to drive a car. First, I would have to pass a written test, as well as a vision test to get my permit. I would then need to have to drive to have my permit for an entire year while I learn how to drive, with a minimum of 40 hours driving time. And if I'm under 18, I need to pass driver's ed. Then I have to go back to the DMV, pass a technical exam. After all this is done, I can go buy a car, but I still need car insurance, and my car needs to pass annual inspections in order for me to drive it legally. Cars have a lot of purposes. Living in a tiny town 30 minutes from anything bigger, I probably said to spend a minimum of four hours in a car per week. But we still do what we, have, what we can to minimize the amount that can kill people. This is why we have tests and licenses, and you have your license taken away if you break laws regarding automobiles. Guns may not kill as many people as cars, but we don't have regulations necessary for, for an item expressly meant to kill. Some people might say that me missing chemistry today is a disruption of my education. 
Personally, I think a bigger disruption is me being dead. Thank you. So, um, the House ringing three bells, like you're hearing right now, is a roll call vote. So my committee, the House Education Committee, has to go upstairs and vote, and then we'll come back down and continue to listen. In the meantime, the press remains in the room, and so does Senator Baruth, and we will continue to hear your testimony. Oscar Newberger, and followed by Hope Petraro. testimony from you in Senate Economic Development? We did. I think so. We yeah. did. I'd recognize that smile. Second time in two weeks. I'm not texting. I have my stuff on my okay. phone for the record. <laughs> um, okay. Hello. Uh, I'm Oscar Neuberger. I'm a freshman at Montpelier High School. And this bill is important to me because I'm supposed to feel safe at school. I have to be there by law and I shouldn't be scared to be there. And it upsets me that I even need to be here, that I even need to say I deserve to feel safe at school, and that I even need to ask for you guys to do something about the fact that children are being murdered in their classrooms, and I'm only 15 years old, but it'd probably take 10, 25 fingers for me to count the amount of times I've heard um, school shooting in the United States. And I can't help but wonder why Parkland? Why was Parkland the last straw for people to do something? Why didn't we do something after Sandy Hook? Why did it take this many kids to die before we decided it was enough? Why wasn't one kid being shot in their own classroom enough? Why, wasn't, why was that okay, but now that, but now that we're such a, at such a high number, it's not? The time for action isn't now, it was years ago. The time for action was after Sandy Hook, even before then. And now that you've given us space to speak and are listening to us, I, I'm asking, pass the gun bill, please. When I say goodbye to my parents and my sister in the morning, I shouldn't have to be sure that I say I love you because I might not see them again. I shouldn't have to worry about my safety when I'm in a classroom. And I shouldn't have to wonder if my sister's okay. I shouldn't have to intensely cherish the time I have with my friends because I might watch them die on the floor of the gym next week. Adults say that we should trust them it's been imprinted on us since birth that adults are here to take care of us and that we should let them make the decisions, that they are there to choose for us. And from what we eat to when we go to bed since we've been born, adults are in control. But, and they say we should stay out of politics, but my peers are dying. Kids, kids around me are dying. I could, have, I could have been killed. If I was born in a different place, I could have been killed. I could be dead and it's not okay. And I need you to show us that we can trust you because I, when, we were, when we're born we trust adults, but I'm losing that. I'm losing my faith in both the government and adults in general to protect me and protect other, others around me. Show us and show the rest of the country that the lives of Vermont's kids and the lives of kids everywhere in the United States matter more than gun ownership because when I'm 16 years old, I can't go to an R-rated movie by myself, but I can buy an, a gun without my, without my mother saying it's okay. And you can't kill someone with an R-rated movie. Um, please do something. Show us that children being murdered while they're hidden in a closet, hiding under desks, fearing for their lives, isn't okay. Thank you. Petraro to be followed by Nicholas Cole. And I'm also reading off my phone. Hello everyone, my name is Hope Petraro. I'm 15 years old and I'm a sophomore at Montpelier High School. I've been following this issue for quite some time. I spent two and a half hours at the public hearing about a month ago and I spent two and a half hours at the Senate debate on S6. As a sophomore class president and a teenager who loves politics, I try to speak to my politically involved classmates especially those who disagree with my beliefs, so I can educate myself on different perspectives and as well as my own. 
Firstly, just because people who get in car accidents while wearing seatbelts are still injured, that doesn't mean seatbelts aren't effective or worth having in a car. The same principle applies to background checks. Many argue that background checks would not have prevented mass shootings, yet mass shootings only account for 3% of firearm deaths, according to BBC. The positive effects of UBCs are boundless. What have we to lose by supporting S6? Furthermore, H-22 allows for law enforcement officer to confiscate a dangerous weapon if the weapon is in the immediate possession or control of the person being arrested or cited, in plain view of the officer, or discovered during a consensual search. The time after law enforcement is initially involved in a domestic violence situation is when the victim, um, in which the, is the time in which the victim is most likely to be seriously injured or killed. This legislation would save lives. Lastly, S-221 states that if the family division of the Superior Court finds by clear and convincing evidence that the person poses a significant danger of causing injury to himself or herself or another person by purchasing, possessing, or receiving a firearm or, or by having a firearm within the person's custody or control, then that weapon can be confiscated. Those opposed to gun control argue that gun control laws are a quote-unquote slippery slope there's no way that these laws contribute to a slippery slope when most of the, when they only apply to very, very specific situations that wouldn't extend past domestic abuse or violent individuals. These laws, by confiscating firearms, prevent crimes from taking place, and an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's been five and a half years since the Sandy Hook shootings, where nationwide conversation on gun control was propelled into the spotlight. Two months ago, police killed an active shooter outside of my high school after my classmates and I cowered for two hours in a dark room. Now whenever I go into school, I think about how easily someone could enter and kill us all. There was a recent shooting threat in Fairhaven. Every day when I check the news, I'm bombarded by stories about shooting threats and shooting deaths, and that's only a finite percentage of the firearm deaths within our country. I'm desensitized. I think this is normal, but should it be? The problem only escalates, especially in America. I wonder, do legislators care because they know it's right, or do they care because we're pressuring them? Regardless, I'm thankful for the, thankful for the attention this issue is getting, especially from our politicians. Something has to change. This is why I and many, many other students urge you to support gun control legislation within the State House right now. We're kids bargaining for our lives. The conversation continues, but we all know actions speak louder than words. Thank you for your continued support. Nicholas Colwell, followed by Rowan Leach. Thank you. Um, I'm here just to give a brief account of the experiences that I've had over the past two months with gun violence and the threat of gun violence, which were thankfully relatively mild. Uh, there was the shooting death that Hope described of uh, the active shooter on the grounds of Montpelier High School. And uh, the school administration handled that very well. And I texted my parents from inside a dark, locked classroom. And it was when my dad told me that he loved me, that it really hit me that maybe I could die that day or see my friends die. Uh, one of my friends goes to one of the schools in the area that recently had a shooting threat and there is a concert scheduled at her school fairly soon that I would like to go to, and my parents are considering telling me, no, you can't go because we don't want you dying in a shooting. It is unacceptable that they should have to worry about that. It is unacceptable that my little brother and I should have to think every morning when we tell them that we love them, whether or not that will be the last time. This needs to change. This means banning bump stocks, limits to magazine capacities, and strict regulation or an outright ban of uh, what are commonly referred to as assault-style weapons. And uh, I'd like to end by just posing a question to anybody who would oppose common sense gun legislation like that. Can you please, if you oppose that legislation, look me or any of my peers in the eyes and tell us that our lives are worth less than your right to own that type of weapons? Thank you. Rowan Leach, I hope I pronounced that correctly, followed by 
Nastaya Abdullahi. Hello, my name is Rowan Leach. I'm 14 years old. I'm a freshman, and I go to Montpelier High School. I didn't know anything about testifying until today, and that would, it would make my voice heard. And as soon as I fully understood what it was, I had to participate. I had to take the opportunity to make my voice heard by my government, to give me the opportunity to say how I feel about this issue. This issue is always close in my mind. Whenever we have a lockdown, whenever the crackle of an intercom is heard without any warning, is this it? Is this the time that our school's luck runs out? Because it is luck. It is complete and utter luck. Who cracks, who doesn't, who takes the opportunity to come in and shoot up a school? And we become the next victim, another statistic point on an ever-growing trend. Will my family suffer tragedy? Will I never get a chance to fulfill my dreams? Will I have never told my sister I love her because we were having a fight this morning? And I didn't tell her that before she went to school and I don't have an opportunity to contact her before I, my blood paints the walls red. Vermont is a leader in a number of ways. We have taken ownership on so many things, whether it be gay marriage, legalizing marijuana, freeing slaves before any of the other states did. It's so easy to convince oneself that because we have so many less incidents on the scale of the national school shootings, but they do occur. Just last month, my school and the community took the lead on yet another key political statement raising the Black Lives Matter flag, but just before, just a couple weeks, a couple days before, we experienced a shooting on the school grounds. While the man who was shot was not actively trying to get into the school, he had rather robbed the bank just across the street. My adrenaline had still kicked in, my heart was pounding like I had run a marathon, and I was shaking. I was in a classroom carefully shepherded away from the end of the school with, where the man was, and I was told to sit there quietly, that the police were handling it, that everything was, be, was going to be okay. But still, on the social media, rumors flew, whether it was my friend from another school district miles away saying, I heard there was a school shooting, are you okay? <laughs> or, you know, just my friends down the hall reaching out to me saying, have you heard anything we haven't heard? What's the news? What is going on? And I cannot help but wonder if this is what it's like for those people whose luck has run out. If this feeling, this, this pounding, this trembling, this, this absolute confusion and wonder, why does this person have a gun? Why are they outside my school? Why is the place where I just go to be educated to get a head start on living my life to the fullest? Why is this where someone has chosen to take violence and make it a part of my life? My generation is the one to stand up after Parkland, and we're applauded for it. Everybody who spoke out there said, we applaud you for standing up. Why are the, but why are we the ones standing up for it? It is because my generation's blood is the blood that is being spilled. It is our blood that is <coughs> running down the steps of our schools, that is flowing in the hallways because politicians sit still and twiddle their thumbs and do nothing. It's so easy to just vote yes and make these things harder to get for the people that think that they need them. It, why do you need a military grade weapon after all? Why do you need something that the military, whose only job is, is killing other people for various reasons, but their job is to kill. So why do the civilians, our job is not to kill. Why do we have those weapons then? Our generation should not have to stand up so that our schools become a safe place. Thank you. Thank you.
Nastaya Abdullahi, followed by Zanivia Wilcox. Hello, my name is Nasteha Abdullahi. Um, I am a 18-year-old senior from Burlington High School. I came here today with one other friend to support Montpelier High School's representatives and to testify. <clears throat> I'm here today not just to represent Burlington, but to stand with my peers from Montpelier. My family fled from Somalia in 2008 because it was a war-stricken and gun-stricken country. I've seen and experienced living in a place where there are no gun restrictions. I've seen the worst of the worst. So yes, I do pray every day and every night for being in Vermont, for being in America. I'm here today because there is this assumption that Vermont is this clean, anti-violent state. But according to Gun Sense Vermont, we have the highest gun deaths in New England, twice the, that of Massachusetts. I'm shocked by the 12,000 gun homicides in America a year. <clears throat> what Montpelier High School has demonstrated today and in being here to testify is the first step, and that is to call on our senators and representatives to ask them to face these issues head on. It is time to act. Students are dying at devastating rates, and it's time to stop this cycle, cycle of mourning and praying. If I die tomorrow in my English class, I do not want my family and friends and the sympathetic nation to weep and pray for me. I do not want them to forget what has happened. A life has been taken, a person dead, a student with dreams and hopes, now just a rotting body, who's only remembered by their loved ones. We walk out of our classrooms and honor the Parkland victims for 17 minutes. What is 17 minutes to an entire lifetime? And why is this, why is our country so wrapped up in terrorism and building up walls to stop immigration? Why don't you build a wall to stop the terrorists that are right in our schools? The ones who are mentally ill only after seven, killing 17 students. I can't sleep because every night I remember the looks of the students in my school, being careful to be nice to everyone because how do I know a mass shooter isn't sitting up that same night planning to take lives? It feels as if we're sitting on the edge of our seats like everyone is waiting for the next huge shooting to happen. And as scary as it seems, I'm not surprised. I feel like no real change will happen until something so devastating happens. I beg you please not to let that be the case. Thank you. Zanivia Wilcox, followed by Liam McCry. Hi. Uh, before you start, we do have some empty seats if people would like to filter into the room and um, grab one. Don't feel you have to, but should you want to. Hi. Uh, my name is Navy Wilcox. I'm a junior at BHS, and I'm here to support this very relevant and important topic, as well as support these very strong Montpelier students sitting behind me. Much like the Seha, I moved to Vermont 12 years ago because my mother didn't want us to be raised in the gang and gun-related environment that was and still is prevalent in Miami, in Miami, Florida. I'm very familiar with this feeling because I felt it through my mother. My mother telling me why we can't move back or why we moved in the first place. Many people ask why we act now. We act now because there should be no later. We act now because we have the privilege to be living now. We act now because we don't want to wish we had when we're stuck hiding behind a desk or trying to find the words that sum up how much we love our family as we shake the fear in the corner of our history class. We act now because fear cannot be put on the back burner. We act now because I'm tired of tensing up with fear when the fire alarms go off or thinking, or thinking of every possible way to escape when I enter a new building in my classroom. These Montpelier students also inspired VHS students to raise the Black Lives Matter flag. We are here to furthermore implement that, implement that message. The message that we are all important, we all matter, and our lives matter. We asked for a further background check, and yeah, so we asked, we asked for further background checks and the banning of automatic slash military grade weapons. But more importantly, we asked for you to care. We asked for you to value our lives. We asked for you to act now because this is why we act now. Thank you.
William Fry, followed by Greta Alexandra Park. Good afternoon. My name is Liam Fry, and I'm a senior at Tate Montpelier High School. We are here to talk about gun safety. This topic is extremely important to me and my fellow students, as we are the, we are the ones most often put in harm's way. In my government, I want to see people taking action and changing laws surrounding gun control because we are sick and tired of being scared while going to a place that's supposed to be safe, especially in a place we are forced to go to learn, but under the same regulations, we are not guaranteed safety. They cannot keep us safe in a place that is, that is the responsibility to keep safe, as we cannot do this. Only help. Ooh. Only help. You're doing fine. Okay. You're doing fine. Only help. This will become a higher priority as it's deciding the lives of many people at such a young age that should never be put in this position in the first place. It has been crazy to grow up in a lot, grow up in a society where gun violence is normalized. We are forced to go to a place to learn by law, but in these same laws we are not guaranteed safety. I, I call to you to hear that the students that are asking for change, it is your responsibility to make the change. I know you know what needs to be changed, so change it. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day. Greta Alexandra Parker, followed by Hannah Frazier. Hi, my name is Greta Alexandra Parker, and I'm a freshman at Essex High School. I took part in organizing the walkout at Essex, and I also spoke at the walkout. I told my peers that across our nation, mass shootings continue to increase. While our neighboring countries have laws for guns, we are nowhere close to succeeding in solving this problem. It is time for a change. I told them that cars kill many people when our parents are growing up, because there were no seatbelts in cars. This forced a social change to happen because people didn't want their kids dying in cars anymore. I also said that we have a president who accepts over $30 million from the National Rifle Association. <coughs> and I continue to say what really bothers me is that our president is not the only politician who receives money from the NRA. In fact, we have politicians that represent the state of Vermont that receive money from the NRA. We might be a progressive state, and I'm lucky to live in Vermont, but we have a lot of problems that need to be solved. We need longer waiting periods, and we need to raise the minimum age for buying guns, and we need to ban assault weapons, because assault weapons are made to kill people. You do not hunt with assault weapons, and you do not shoot them for fun. They're made to kill people, and that's why people are dying. <coughs> I don't want to die in my classroom, just like many other students here today said, because this is a real fear, and this could happen in my own high school and other high schools across the nation and in our state. This could be your children and your grandchildren. This is a time for action, not for talking. Thank you. Hannah Frazier, followed by Amelia Fife. Good afternoon. My name is Hannah Frazier, and I'm a sophomore at Champlain Valley Union High School, and I helped to organize our walkout. The message that we put forth was our opposition to legislative inaction in response to school shootings. In a nation where children are victims of mass murder, legislators such as yourselves must not be complicit in our deaths. As members of the House and Senate Education Committees, I implore you to take action on behalf of the hundreds of Vermont students who walked out of their schools. I personally propose legislation be put forth that would ban the sale and exchange of semi-automatic firearms. Out of all mass shootings in the U.S., including those at schools between 1982 through 2017, over half of weapons used were that kind. Semiotic guns have a rapid firing ability which allows them to kill multiple people within seconds. There is a reason that shooters almost exclusively use that kind of weapon specifically. 
Yet what is terrifying is that most were obtained legally. As you can do in Vermont, I myself, a 16-year-old, could purchase that kind of weapon. Although the right to bear arms is protected both within the state and national constitution, we must acknowledge that rights come with responsibilities. What justifiable civilian purpose exists for owning a weapon that is made solely for mass murder? As the genocide of American school children has become commonplace, what can be said of the state and of a nation which will not take responsible measures to protect its youngest and most vulnerable? The safety of my life, of the students in this room, is at risk. Any day, we could walk into our school bus in the morning being driven to our death. I do not want to tell my parents I love you without knowing that it will be the last time. I do not want to see the last look upon my friends' faces be existential terror. Too long have the bones of school children been tread upon without hearing the crunch. Our blood has stained the ground long enough. We need action and we need it now at this moment. It was due long ago, but witnessing these deaths seeing so many mass shootings as I'm growing up, knowing that this has become a part of my life, seeing youth murdered, it is imperative that action must be taken. Thank you. Amelia Fifield, followed by Madeline Koff. I'm a junior at Hartford High School, and I was one of the two organizers for the National School Walkout at Hartford. Hartford's walkout was organized to be inclusive as possible for all students of all political opinions. It was a show of solidarity for those affected in, Park in Parkland, and a student, Amber DeFord, spoke about her friend who was killed in the Parkland shooting last month. I'm here today to ask for action and for change. It is easier to buy a gun in this country than it is to get a driver's license, a pet from an animal shelter, and even some prescription medicines. We need to raise the age of legally buying a gun to 21. We need to make sure that every school is safe, that every student is comfortable going to school in the morning. Fear has no place in our schools. No one convicted of domestic abuse should be able to own a gun. Dangerous people should never have a gun in their hands. Just yesterday in Hanover, New Hampshire, right across the river from Hartford, Vermont, there was a school shooting threat. We cannot sit here and tell ourselves all day that this will never happen to us. It will never be our school. However, if we don't take action, we aren't doing anything at all. We know what needs to be done. We just must have the courage to do it. I will be marching in Montpelier on March 24th with students and teachers from my school supporting Parkland and continuing to demand action. Thank you for your time. Madeline Call, followed by Samoa Dufolik <coughs> Robokai. Hello. My name is Madeline Koff, and I'm a senior at Hartford High School and an organizer of our walkout. Hundreds, and hundreds of students and staff members walked out with us. My friend Amelia just spoke about our high school's walkout and what we are here to ask for. The students here today and the people who participated in the walkout on March 14th are or will be voters. We care. We are invested in these issues of school safety, and we will be heard. It is devastating that time and time again, our safety and lives are being compromised in places that are supposed to be dedicated to our growth. Um, being passed around for pictures from our walkout, they got a little bit crumpled, but we hope that you will see um, what we did. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Samoa Krolik Lobakai, followed by Jackson Markow. I'm a junior at Essex High School. My fellow students and I have come to the State House to appeal to you, politicians and parents alike, for change. A change that would bring our nation solace. A change that would prevent more names from being added to the list of the nearly 20 schools 
of Ari endured great tragedy at the hands of gun violence within 2018, including one just yesterday in Maryland. A change that would mean that our young lives take priority over the millions that special interest groups have invested in our representatives at both the state and federal level. A change that means that firearms are no longer available for purchase to those who have criminal and domestic violence records. A change that means more stringent background checks and a longer waiting period for those attempting to obtain said firearms. A change that raises Vermont's own bare minimum rifle purchase age from 16 to 21. A change that bans the possession and usage of semiotic weaponry by civilians. A change that would make both our education and childhood no longer a risk, but a right. As students, as children, and as citizens of the United States, we must join together to petition for the stronger gun control laws that so many politicians have ignored throughout the decades. Today, my voice is strong, just as my peers across the country are. Today, we call on you, those with the power to do what is right, to be brave as we are and choose change. Jackson Markow, followed by Hazel McMillan. All right, good afternoon. Um, I'm Jackson Marco. I'm a senior at Montpelier High School, and um, I may echo the sentiments of my fellow students' testimonies today, um, but I'd like to call attention to an epidemic that is far less spoken of uh, than the main focus of the debate today, but has an incredible magnitude um, which should never be trivialized, that of gun suicides. Suicides make up a tremendous share of gun deaths, 61% of all gun deaths. And for those roughly my age, guns are even, guns and gun suicides are even a greater concern. According to a CDC analysis, Nearly 5,800 minors are injured every year, and 1,300 are killed, making guns the third biggest cause of death among minors. Above pediatric anomalies, heart disease, influenza, and many illnesses that millions of dollars and countless hours are being spent on every year by our government. So I ask those who are above me, why are we not spending time and money and energy fixing this problem of man-made machines, not natural things like influenza and cancer and the flu that are killing us, but man-made machines that are all around us? So of those 1,300 yearly gun deaths of minors, over 500 are suicides. Um, these are deaths of fellow humans, so many of which would have likely regretted their actions had they been given more time to consider the worth of their own life. But by making guns so incredibly easy to access, when in Vermont, a 16, 17, or 18 year old can walk into a gun store and purchase one, my government has effectively said that the, the precious time and um, the worth of their life is less than the fun of sport for others. But I have hope because I know you are my government and I know that you have the power and the initiative to take change against this issue. You can take action to reduce the availability of guns by passing background checks for all guns, mandating waiting periods, um, safety courses, and other measures, all of which have been shown to reduce not only this continual epidemic of gun suicides among young people, but also all gun deaths, including the myriad of types that threaten us daily and yearly that my fellow students have talked about. Um, you have the power to make this change, and on behalf of my fellow students and anyone whose life may someday be taken by a bullet, I ask you to do so. Thank you. Hazel McMillan, followed by Ian Keene. Hi, my name is Hazel McMillan. Uh, I'm a junior at Harwood Union High School. I would like to start my testimony with a perspective unique to me and the students in this state, one that many of you may not be familiar with. For as long as I can remember, I've done active shooter drills in my school. At Harwood, these are called lockdown drills. At any point in the day, we will hear the voice of our principal say secure the building, building three times over the loudspeaker. 
Our teacher will send students around the room to pull the shades and turn off the lights as they lock the door. Then everyone in the class clusters together in a corner not visible from the window, a procedure that now feels almost as absurd as hiding under a desk during a nuclear bomb drill. We sit silently, cross-legged, or with our knees pulled to our chest. Throughout these 10 minutes, thoughts range from thinking about our day, our next class, and practice after school, to wondering if a shooter broke the small glass window in the door and made it in, would I hide behind the bookshelf or Miss Cadwell's desk? Would I try to run out the door or hide behind my best friend? I, th I don't think I need to say that students should not have to think about these things in a place where we come every day to learn. Schools are not safe as long as the threat of a dangerous person with a gun remains. And with this I say, we cannot allow more guns, more security, and more fear to enter our schools. That is not the solution. Students need to feel safe again. The concept behind universal background checks is preventing a greater portion of dangerous gun buyers from obtaining guns. Anyone who wants to buy a gun legally will have to prove that they are fit. This is common sense gun control. An entire world of gun sales exists, unregulated, unchecked, and untracked. These private sales, which make up 40% of gun sales, need a universal background check bill. Of the 17 states with UBCs in the United States, the firearm suicide rate is 49% lower, gun trafficking drops 48%, and 38% fewer women are shot dead by their intimate partner. That fact alone should get our attention, given that half of Vermont's homicides are domestic violence. Please con consider the effectiveness of universal background checks for the safety of students in Vermont. Thank you. Ian Keane, followed by Sabina Brochu. Hello, my name is Ian Keane. I am a junior at Montpelier High School. And I would just like to say that we've heard <coughs> fear in this room from my peers. It's been expressed many ways, but they're all similar. It's fear. Now, some people would say that we live in a complicated time, a dangerous time even, and that, you know, we should be able to move past this fear, just move on, toughen up, move on with our day. But I'm here to say that this fear can be easily solved. Common sense gun legislation is a way that this part of fear can be removed simply <coughs> and easily so that we can all move forward with our lives, that we can live our lives, we can live to reach old age. Thank you. Sabina Brochu. Sabina Brochu and I'm an eighth grader at Williston Central School and I helped organize the school walkout at our school. Along with walking out to honor the 17 victims of the Parkland shooting, we also held a pre presentation demonstrating all the different ways that the Parkland shooting touched different political topics. I represented our school in talking about gun control and this is what I said that day. According to USA Today, we are currently living in a country that since 2013 has had over 300 school shootings. That's an average of one school shooting, shooting per week. In a civilized first world country, I should not have to be scared that every morning before school, when I say goodbye to my parents, it's the last time I see them. But, that's not the, but it's not the fact that in our country you can own a weapon that makes me mad. It's the fact that a 19-year-old man was allowed to get a hold of an AR-15. I can't go out and vote and I can't run for office, but this is my way of making a difference. I am standing up here asking American voters and congressmen and women to change our gun laws. This stretch of terror cannot go on any longer. So I stand here and I ask all the men and women of America, is it really worth it to have a gun if every day millions of kids go to school worried that they could get shot? Recently I was told that even though kids can't vote, they have a voice. So this is my way of using my voice and standing up the, to the people in Congress and the people in America who <coughs> value their guns more than their future. And this is my message to those people. Just think that every time a child dies from a gunshot, it's your fault for being too stubborn to give up your assault weapon. So I say this is enough.
So I understand we may have the two student representatives from the State Board of Ed here, is that? They're on their way, they should be hearing that. Okay, at this point, let me ask, because we've um, run out of listed witnesses, is there anyone who, having uh, heard testimony, has decided they'd like to speak? Okay, that being the case, I know that Senator Ballin has something she'd like to uh, make sure everybody knows. So for any of you who are planning to go down to D.C. for the march, or if you know other folks who are going down for the march, Senator Leahy will be hosting a Vermonter who will be in D.C. for Saturday's march on Saturday morning from 9 to 11, and you just need to call Senator Leahy's office for the details about where to meet up. So I know the Senator would love to meet with any students, especially who are coming down, and certainly your families as well. And if you would spread the word on social media, that would be great. Thank you. I can get you the phone number before we leave your office. 802-863-2525. You want to say that again? Yes. Real loud? You can call our Burlington office, 863-2525. If you're going to DC, So if I got that right, it's 863-2525. So thank you all for coming. I want to thank Representative Pino Batista for spearheading this and, and making it happen. Um, the voices of students is so important, and I, I want to thank you for making things happen. A year ago, uh, this discussion, the possibility of passing something in the State House would not have been possible. And it's because students have spoken up and continue to push for changes that things may happen. And I hope to be part of that change. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, please continue to speak up any way you can find to do that. Thank you. Uh, I guess we won't be able to hear from the representatives from the State Board of Ed because uh, we can't just sit in silence while they, while they come. Um, I just wanted to add one thing before we uh, let everybody go, and that is there's a reason why traditionally politicians don't pay attention to people your age. Because first of all, you can't yet vote, many of you. And when you do have the ability to vote, statistically you vote in much less numbers than people who are, let's say, 50 and older. So what I would suggest to you is what you've done is fantastic. The only way to make sure that this moment doesn't vanish is to vote in large numbers when you can vote and make that earthquake happen come election day. Will any of you be committing to signing the bills and sort of shepherding the passage of these bills, um, openly committing to doing that right now? Yeah. Many, many of us are not. <laughs> so, let me, if I can, declare the, the hearing uh, over. And with that said, and we're in a more casual frame, I will say this. As Senator Ballant said, S-55, which left the Senate with uh, universal background checks and a rise in the age to 21, made it out of House Judiciary today, six to five. They included bump stocks and magazine uh, restrictions. So those four pieces are now S-55. That goes, as I said outside, to the House floor probably Friday, uh, and then that's when the House will make its determination. If they send it back to the Senate, we will have the opportunity to concur, at which point if we do, it would go to the governor. That's the moment where uh, I think another burst of activism might be um, well positioned. Senator Baruch, if I can add as well, we passed out Senate Bill 221, and the House has passed out 422, and those bills are, right. are crossing chambers, and hopefully both of those bills will be passed as well. And as Senator Bruce said, it's very important that the governor commits to signing on, which he has in the last few weeks, but I think it's really important for him to know that there is support in the public for that to happen. Well, let me just talk a minute about why your activism is so important. And that is because um, there are many legislators trying to figure out what they can vote for and what they can't vote for. And so as leadership works for, towards trying to put an appropriate bill on the floor, if it's made too 
uh, restrictive, then we lose people who want very loose controls over uh, uh, gun safety. On the other hand, if we make it too loose, we lose votes on people who want it to be more uh, restrictive. So your voice is so important, and your activism is so important. And I, I kept an informal list of what you felt were the important elements of a bill that should pass. And the more you make that known to your legislator, to your neighbors, to your community, whether it's in a forum like this, or, or a gathering at the State House steps, or at your school buildings, or letters to the editor, or other ways of being active and involved in this discussion in this state at this point in time, the more likely could that we actually pass some strong legislation. And, and if I could, uh, could add something. Um, please don't paint us all with the same brush. Please look on the website. You can see who's voted for things and who's voted against things. And I really want to put in a, some praise for Senator Baruch because even before Parkland uh, happened and Fairhaven happened, Senator Baruch, yeah, for, for years, he's, this is my first term, but Senator Baruch has been here for many years, and he had a universal background check bill, and he was very frustrated that it wasn't moving along, and he had already asked and really demanded that we have a debate about it, even before Parkland, and because of the tragedy of Parkland, and the near tragedy of Fairhaven, and because all of you have, have risen up, it finally created the environment in which Phil, Senator Baruch's um, wish came true. We were able to not only debate it, but pass it, which is really remarkable. So I really want to give kudos to him. delegation voted in favor of all of the all the bills so far that have been uh, that have been proposed and you know please please look and see who, who does what and, and uh, I would really appreciate it. Uh, I'm Daniel Jim he's a I'm a state representative in Essex Junction so I, I have to acknowledge um, that part of the reason we're here today is because students have reached out and you've made your voices heard. And I know that as members of the Education Committee sitting around this table, um, we really value having a robust debate, hearing all sides, and taking that into consideration as we vote. But I also want to encourage you um, that after this day, and it's not just on the issue of school safety or gun violence, but on all the issues that confront our state, our country, our world, uh, your voices shouldn't stop because when we go quiet things change and it's not always for good everyone around this table cares about kids we're not all from the same party we're not all from the same parts of the state and we all have very different experiences but we listen and when you speak we learn so i encourage you to keep showing up i encourage you to work with people who see things differently and to keep an open mind. But here's what I'll tell you. There is no way that we cannot listen to what is being said and not be moved. It's not because it's emotional. It's not because of the way you say it. It's because this is an issue that demands action. So I encourage you, keep acting. As long as you put your voices out there, as long as you show up, we will listen. Thank you. I wonder if you said earlier, why should we be doing this? You do something. And let me tell you, throughout history, the groups that have been able to create change in the groups that are affected by what's happening and the members from the group will listen to leadership from within the group. The black people and Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and so forth. The ability, the ability these groups have that they can mobilize votes and that's what you have to do. Want to know more about that? Talk to me.
I want a lot of my life as a changing agent in the public school system. Anyone else like to say a word before we go? Ah. Is this the uh, representatives from the state board? Yes. Yeah. We are ready to hear from you. <laughs> So, hello, my name is Connor Salomano. I'm a senior at Rutland High School and I'm on the State Board of Education as a student member. Um, hi, my name is Callie Beck. I'm a junior at St. Cosmo Academy. I'm a representative on the State Board of Education. So, we've kind of missed out on what you've talked about before <laughs> us, so please excuse us if uh, we're repeating some things. But I, I guess I'll just start off by talking about what my high school has done and then talk about the wider area of Vermont and then the whole national movement. So at Rowland High School, we actually had a snow day on Wednesday, um, which was the planned day for the walkout. And so with the cold temperatures, we decided the next Monday to just kind of hold a memorial service uh, to honor the lives of the, the lives lost in the massacre um, at MSD in Florida. And so we, we held a nonpartisan ceremony just kind of trying to really just honor the lives of the lives lost. And uh, kind of we've seen across the state how so many schools have approached this differently. Some have had walkouts, some have had memorials. Uh, and it just really speaks to kind of the power uh, that students have had in this issue. And students have said that we're not willing to just kind of let this issue be swept under the rug. Uh, to let another tragedy happen and, and not see legislative action in the form of gun control or in the form of uh, different mental health reform. Um, and, and so there are just so many schools you can see with all the students <coughs> here that have participated in this. And whether they're just holding memorials or holding walkouts, regardless of their political beliefs, it's clear that students really care about this issue. Um, and I think that's something that we need to take note of, that uh, this, is, this is an extremely important issue. And I'd like to also kind of focus on just the leaders of this movement, the people who really started this. From the very beginning, the students at MSD, uh, there were primarily five of them that kind of, well, a lot of students there actually took a lead, but there were a, a group of five students that really took some initiative and got, you probably saw their pictures all over the New York Times, uh, all over pretty much any news outlet. Um, and I'd encourage anyone here to watch a 60 Minutes episode that aired this last Sunday that kind of had an interview with these five students and it, it went through kind of what they'd like to see from this national walkout movement, uh, what they hope, and it, it detailed what they've experienced so far. So I just, I'd really encourage uh, everyone here to kind of check that out. I think it really details what the whole movement, the walkout movement is about. Um, and students are definitely showing that we have voice and we really want to be heard. And then at my high school, um, prior to the date um, assigned for the walkout, our headmaster spoke to our student body directly because um, he had safety concerns regarding students simply just walking out of class. He felt that wasn't safe, so he allowed students to come and meet with him during lunch block and discuss ways that they wanted to approach it. And some students got upset because it was student-led and they felt now teachers were getting involved. And then, but on a positive side, students who I've had class with and they don't talk a lot, they're definitely quieter, wet, and they spoke to him directly and said, this is what I believe, this is what I stand for, this is what we need to do. And thankfully we had a delay, not a snow day, so it still took place. And our school changed the schedule, so no one really left class, but you were assigned either to go to advisory and simply talk about it, or you could go to where we have chapel and there was a memorial service. And students, even with those two options, they still felt they needed to protest in some way. 
So they went and they stood outside of one of our academic buildings and they just stood there in silence. They didn't yell or hold signs. There were a few signs that just said enough is enough because we didn't want to protest against any kind of gun violence because then someone could protest hate at the same time if you allow that to be fair. And then it was still was continuing to be talking talked about. I mean, I really think this isn't an issue that's going away anytime soon. I really think students have found their voice in an issue and I think this I think this is gonna be something that's talked about in future in twenty years in history class is this movement. I think it's really huge and I think sometimes our generation is talked about as we're addicted to social media and technology and I think this is just a great step for our generation and we're using our social media to promote our voices in a positive way. And I'm just really proud of what Vermont students have done across the state. Um, I saw several pictures of schools it, protesting and peacefully and I think it's a great way for Vermont to really have a voice and I just think it's really important. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mentioned outside that my daughter uh, was one of the organizers at Hunt Middle School in Burlington for their walkout and how proud I was of her. Um, I have to believe that all of your parents are extremely proud of you today. I'm proud of you as citizens of Vermont for coming out. I know Chairman Sharp feels the same way. I'd also like to thank Dylan for uh, having the idea of this hearing. It was a brilliant idea um, and we should do it more often. I hope this won't be the last time you come to the State House. Oscar uh, has already been here twice in the last two weeks. I'm sure we're gonna hear more from uh, Oscar. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, I, I hope that everyone who wanted to be here was. Thank you. Thank you.